All right, so I'm here with Paul Humphreys from OMD. How are, you, how are you doing today? Doing very, very well. We had a nice day off here in San Francisco yesterday, which is a rare day off, and the weather was beautiful. Yes, so, you uh, brought, funnily enough, you brought great weather. I know. And I was down at, uh, my girlfriend flew in from London, so we went down to Pier 39 and had some nice seafood, and it was really nice. Fantastic. And I saw you guys were on the bridge, so that's, you know, you yep. got that in. And <laughs> yep. so how has the tour been so far? The tour has been amazing, actually. It's been amazing. We seem to be selling out everywhere we go at the moment, in the in Europe as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think we're doing something right. I'm not quite sure what it is. And, <laughs> and, and also, what's been interesting is um, is that as we get older, our audience seems to get younger. Interesting. I'm just, uh, not quite sure why that's happening either. It could be something to do with you know the digital revolution, really. I mean, I think cause there's a lot of young people who you know, uh, follow the algorithms. If you like this, you might like that. And maybe they're discovering this that way. There's a lot of um, younger bands who are citing us as, as an influence. So perhaps their audience are checking us out. I'm not quite sure. Also Pretty in Pink, the movie s seems to be a cult classic. And I think a younger generation have taken to it as well. So maybe I think it's all those things accumulated. But Definitely a lot more people are coming to, a lot more younger people are coming to see us. Absolutely, and definitely in the Bay Area with the whole, or I, I guess you could say the West Coast even, the whole DIY kind of scene. And yeah. you guys were kind of at the forefront of that back in the mid to late 70s. Yeah, we were. I mean, we didn't have the support of a major label in those days, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it was tricky. Uh, so we were just relying on college radio, really. To, and they were playing things like electricity and all the gay and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, but that sort of built our sort of um, core fan base, I think. Definitely. That stuck with us. And how would you say the new album compares to, you know, what people have heard in the past? What differ um, differentiates? I think I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, the, I mean the reviews have been amazing. It's sold incredibly well, particularly in Europe. It sold really really well. Um, I think, you know, what we've tried to do, I mean, it's not really for us to say, but what we've tried to do is is be true to our roots mm -hmm. with the album, mm -hmm. um, uh, but also try to bring it into the now with using a lot of modern uh, production techniques mm -hmm. and sounds and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, but, but keep to our, our, our sort of principles, really, and our roots. And what's interesting is that Andy and I, you know, as, as the songwriters, we... Um, we're kind of like kids again because because there's there's no real commercial pressures. You know, we don't we're not doing this for the money. Great. We're doing this because we don't need the money. We're doing this for the fun, the love of being an OMD, mm -hmm. and we're all great friends. Mm -hmm. You know, we all love each other's company. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Andy and I, we've been friends since we were seven years old. Wow. So we go an awful long way back. <laughs> <laughs> brothers. <even. laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we kind of are. We fight like brothers as well. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, we mm -hmm. we get on great. We've, we've had our moments in the past. I'm sure of it. But, uh, but these days, we just love each other's company, and we love writing songs together. And it's almost like um, when we did this new album, it was like um, it, it was like we were kids again in my, my mum's back room, really. I mean, we didn't write this in my mum's back room, but that's <laughs> where we like started. <laughs> it was kind of a room like this, yeah. <laughs> but it was like, you know, there was no commercial pressures. We mm. just did it for the art. Of it, you know, we we never had any pretense or any any ideas of, of being famous or being successful mm -hmm. when we started out. It was all about music as our art, and hopefully people will connect with it. But you know, but maybe they won't, but maybe they will. But it's all about our expression and and uh, our our sort of ideas, trying to translate our ideas into music, and hopefully people like it. And and with with um, punishment luxury, people seem to be loving it. So. Absolutely, I loved hearing the songs live, and I'm sure they're going to be better now than they They'll were. They'll be better last now, year. and we're playing more of them because <laughs> we've rehearsed them. So uh. great. And what was the first album that you bought that inspired you to get into music? Or discovering Kraftwerk was uh, was really for me and for Andy. Really, mm -hmm. um, was a pivotal moment. I mean, when I heard Autobahn by Kraftwerk on the radio mm -hmm. in about 1974, I was only 14. But really, it was the first day of the rest of my life. It really was. It was. Uh, it was like that is what I want to do. You know, that is sounds like the future to me because I was into kind of sci-fi and all of these kind of things. So, so for for me, it was the music of the future. Right. So, um, so that's what I wanted to do. And uh, and so Kraftwerk and all the other German bands led the way for us. There was you know Kraftwerk, there was Neu, La Dusseldorf, Can, 
all of those bands coming out of Germany. So we were basically just listening to German music and a little bit of David Bowie, Roxy Music, mm. uh, Velvet Underground. And that was mm. kind of it. That was all we were listening to. It's all that we needed, really. <laughs> yeah, it's all that we needed to become a band. And, and you know, what, what was, because, because our musical taste was so narrow, I think that focused us into the type of music we were playing. I think if we were, um, if our music tastes were really quite diverse, it would have kind of polluted what we were doing. Mm-hmm. You know, we were very focused on this is the way forward. The, you can only write songs like this. You can only use these kind of sounds. And it was very blinkered in a way, but it, it formulated the OMD sound, I think. What kind of music are you listening to now? Are there any bands that you think are important that we should listen to? Um, hard to say, really. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, we're always switched on and listening to, listening to stuff. I mean... It's it's discovering things. I rely on my friends now because I'm so busy. I rely on my friends to discover things and send me links. Mm-hmm. But um, what was interesting about this album was that there's um, we discovered a new electronic movement called glitch hmm. music, mm-hmm. and um, a lot of it is really terrible because it's uh, <laughs> it, <coughs> basically it's it's making music out of out of sounds that you would normally throw away. Uh-huh. It's uh, mm-hmm. like the clicks and the pops and bits of distortion and stuff, things that you wouldn't normally associate with music and trying to make music with them. And, um, and there's, but then we discovered a, another German artist called Atom TM, like huh. trademark, uh-huh. Atom t- uh-huh. trademark. And um, he's, an, he's a German artist, but he, did, he was the first person who was doing glitch in a, in a very beautiful melodic way mm-hmm. so all the sounds were kind of dysfunctional and fractured and everything mm-hmm. but but the core of the song was was really good and it really worked so um and there's a song on the album as we open so we close mm-hmm. which was our version of glitch ah. uh, inspired by atom tm so, uh, <laughs> but i like how you turned that into a positive you were somehow as terrible as it was you were still inspired by it yeah, we're inspired by lots of things, but I, I think ultimately our our main influence now is our is ourselves and our history. You know, we what, what was interesting doing this album as well was that um, a year and a half, two years ago, mm-hmm. we uh, we did a special show at um, the Albert Hall in London, mm-hmm. and we played only the songs from Dazzle Ships and the songs from Architecture and Morality, mm-hmm. plus the B sides. That's all we played. Wow. So the entire album, both the albums together. <laughs> and um, and what was interesting was that there was so many many of those songs we hadn't played live before. Interesting. So in putting those together, mm-hmm. we really because we had to find all the sounds and reconstruct them to play live. Mm-hmm. And what we realised was that um, we were so simple. Some of those songs they had only like eight, seven or eight elements to them, and that was it. And so we kind of took that on board with the Punishment to Luxury album and just mm-hmm. decided less is more. And uh, and so we kind of start, you know, the way Andy and I write, we throw the kitchen sink at a song, but then start deleting things, <laughs> because because what happens is mm. when you when you throw an idea on a song, mm-hmm. it might lead you to another idea, but so you start to kind of delete the ideas before until you get to the one you want, mm-hmm. and so but it's very important to keep deleting the the layers and to and, and strip it back to what's important, Absolutely. and that's kind of the way we write, and so. And so that sort of led the way for this album as well. Absolutely. And how did you come about writing Isotope? Isotype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they're kind of... Isotype are, um, is a pictorial language from, uh, from quite a number of decades ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but what was interesting was that we, wanted, we were thinking about writing a song about emojis because uh, mm-hmm. how, the, how the language has been distilled down back into pictures... <laughs> and uh, and and you know we we keep got, we've got t- teenage um, children and and um, children in their twenties, mm-hmm. and they send us these these whole sentences and emojis, and we're like, do you know what that means? <laughs> Have you no idea? Can you tell me what that means? Because I've absolutely no idea. And they're so small, I can't quite make make out what even the face means. You know? Please so, decode. <laughs> please decode. So. We also write a song about emojis, but we thought let's you know we so in discovering pictorial languages we discovered the isotypes, mm-hmm. and so we thought that's perfect OMD you know <laughs> <laughs> lyrical fodder for us. And where do you see the band going in the next couple of years? Um, well, the thing is, we we do 
we're in a like a four year cycle. Mm-hmm. We do a four year, we do a new album and then a tour, and and we're also in our fortieth anniversary year. Okay. So, uh, so we've got plans up until the end of next year uh, wow. with different releases and things. Okay. Because Universal own our back catalogue, and we don't really like to milk our back catalogue, and we've always kind of shied away from too many compilation albums. But mm-hmm. if we've ever had a license to exploit our back catalogue, now is the time. So, <laughs> uh, so I was in, I was in the Universal. Um, I was actually the um, e- uh, EMI archives uh, mm-hmm. just before the tour started. Mm-hmm. I spent a whole day in the archives because they hold all our tapes, oh. and so I mm-hmm. found so many things that were were unreleased. The ideas of mine, Andy. So, ah, yeah, so I've got a hard drive th- waiting for me at home. I see where you're going with this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. So, yeah, we've got, we're, we're kind of booked up until the end of uh, 2019 with oh, wow. things, and then we'll probably take a break. But, you know, the, that's the thing. As long as we've got our health and we still have the energy to do this, and we still do have lots of energy, and, you know, we'll see tonight we'll be a lot of energy from the band as long as we still can keep maintaining that energy then um then we'll keep going and as long as we still feel we have something to say in the name of omd we'll just keep saying it yes (laughs) and somebody was curious and we i know from past experience that andy has his signature dance move yes somebody wanted to know what yours was I don't have one. <laughs> I leave the dancing to Andy. Yeah. <laughs> I just love to play keyboards. Yes, I was like, I was gonna. Yeah, I'm I'm the understated one. <laughs> I just like to play, I like to play and sing. And do you guys ever see yourself playing a small club again? I mean, this is we do fun. sometimes do them. I mean, we um, we Andy and I also we do shows as a duo. Mm. And um, we did a mini tour in February uh, playing um, Scandinavia and we went back to do a special one-off show in Paris at the mm-hmm. Bataclan where, where, where everything, the, thing where the, the, the yeah. thing, terrible thing happened. Yeah. So we wanted to go back to the Bataclan and, um, and just show our support really because it's really important that they didn't close down that venue because then they went... So that, so, but it was kind of weird to be in there because mm. I'd been in there before and imagining what the... The horror of it all was kind of strange, but Absolutely. but it's it's important to keep these venues open because um, it means that they don't win. I agree with that, and um, there's so many great bands that have played the Regency, and there's so many great bands that have played at the Bata Clan. So it's yeah, I agree with you. It's um, so it's great to you know see you having a residency almost and seeing you guys come back and seeing a lot of great bands you know power through as they yeah, say yeah yeah we love to play the smaller places as well i mean you know we get to we, we get the best of both worlds because we love the intimacy of clubs and stuff but also you know this summer we're headlining festivals to you know 30 40 000 people and you cross oh, europe yeah, yeah. so i mean <laughs> we we do the other extreme of it as well right you know putting on a massive show to tens of thousands of people do you would so, you say the energy's better at a festival or um, it's just different it's just different i mean I, in some ways it's kind of um, you feel a little disconnected at those big gigs because mm-hmm. the audience is the stage is so massive and the audience is the first row is so far away and yeah. we're not getting any younger and our eyesight's not that great <laughs> so so you know the front row is already a blur <laughs> you know, whereas at the clubs you see faces you know, in the small events you see faces and you see smiles and you see people enjoying it and singing along to the songs and mm-hmm. you know it's important do you still see a lot of people that you saw back in the day yeah we do have uh yeah returning uh fans who come to see us in fact we've got a few fans that, that show up to an, an enormous amount of shows we have a um a girl from germany who has pretty much seen every show we've done in the last five or six years and goodness knows how she does it and she, she, she shows up she, yeah we play in singapore she shows up we play in south africa she shows up no matter where we are exactly well i, 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 I wish I, I think her husband's an investment banker uh, well <laughs> because it must taking a leaf she must have spent a fortune <laughs> Okay, well, thanks so much, Paul. Thank you so much. Pleasure to speak with you, and um, and I'm looking forward to the show this evening. Enjoy the show. Thank you.